Hey there, friends. Thanks for checking in. I'm with my friend Ken here, and he is an everyday carrier for many, many years, but he chooses something different. What's the gun you carry? I carry a Glock 29 10 millimeter. Let's take a look at it. How many rounds does that hold? 10 plus one or 15 plus one if you want to carry a full size magazine. Okay, 15 plus one of 10 millimeter. All right, so the question is, why, why 10 millimeter? Just because of the power factor. I like having as much power at my fingertips as possible, which 10 millimeter in a small semi-automatic, you're really not gonna get any higher and still gonna be able to carry it. And it also runs the gamut. I mean, some 10 millimeter is loaded as low as 40 Smith & Wesson. Some, uh, you know, is loaded, especially double tap and buffalo bore. They're loaded hot, almost at the low end of a 41 Magnum. Um, right, so, the, so basically what we have here, the 10 millimeter is like a 40 Smith & Wesson supersized. Would, you, would that be a good way to put it? I would call it the 40 Smith & Wesson Magnum. Okay, so that's a good way to put it. So now when, when you shoot this, you, you shoot it with confidence, you shoot it well? Absolutely. Okay, similar to the 40? I think the, the Glock has made a great gun in the 29, and I really do think that I can handle it just as well as a 40, but comes with experience. You know, one thing I find is that a lot of people say, you know, over penetration, or, you know, the, the, the big powerful hand I that's, that's kind of a bunch of crap, isn't it? <laughs> over penetration. I mean, jet, when you're shooting a rifle in your in your home, that's one thing, but I can't see much over penetration with this. Would you agree with that? Over penetration is really only an issue if you plan on breaking the four golden rules. Otherwise, it's not really an issue. That's a good know point. Know what is behind what you're shooting. And I understand that maybe there's a concern for that, but that's why you use a well-designed bullet. Mm -hmm. And I can see here you've got Hornady Critical Defense. And in 15 rounds, or I'm sorry, how many rounds do we have? I see that's 10. 10. Okay, so this is a 10, 10 plus one. What else, what other reasons why do you think somebody else may be interested in carrying 10 millimeter? Uh, it depends on what you're going to do with it. If you want the most power to size ratio, I really don't think there's a better gun and ammo combination than the Glock 29 in 10 millimeter. It's a powerful round, even out of this small barrel, you know, the double tap, which on their site r has a rating for the Glock 29, it's still coming out in 600 plus foot-pounds energy, which is pretty massive. Yeah, that, that, that's pretty good. Now, you feel a lot of recoil on that? I'm not going to say it's not there, but recoil is subjective. With experience, it gets smaller, I believe. Or yeah. you learn to handle it better. Recoil is subjective. You got a lot of guys out there that say, oh, you know, the 40 is too, too hard to handle, and, and, and I get it. But, you know, this, we, you said it's a 40 Magnum, and I would say that that's a good way to describe it, as well as the recoil. Yeah, ex exactly. The recoil is just, if you give something a solid stance, if you're used to, especially guys who are used to shooting uh, big bore revolvers, or even, even shotgun guys, that's, that's a substantial amount of recoil. But it's not that it can't be overcome with training. Right. And training is always the key, isn't it? Absolutely. All right. So that's why you ought to consider a 10 millimeter. I appreciate you watching. Thanks, buddy. No problem. And you guys be safe.